Blogging was light for me earlier this week as I was off to Marin County for the annual conference of my center-left pals at the Breakthrough Institute. Now, Marin County is obviously the perfect place for such a gathering, even if the weather wasn't. This year's theme was creative destruction after the famous concept of economist Joseph Schumpeter. One of the highlights of the conference was the French author Pascal Bruckner, shown here expressing his criticism of environmentalism. I'll have a full review out soon of his new book, The Fanaticism of the Apocalypse. But another highlight was catching up with my friend and occasional energy debate partner, Robert Bryce. So hi everybody, uh, here I am in uh, wonderful Marin County in some really crap weather, uh, but with one of my favorite persons, it's uh, Robert Bryce of the Manhattan Institute, my favorite energy guy ever, <laughs> right? Well, we could talk about a million things, um, but why don't you, um, Try us walking through in a couple minutes your Saudi Arabias. Sure. How many Saudi Arabias of energy we use and what, what's going on with all that? That's interesting. Thank you. Um, scale, 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 scale. We, we, we hear all the time, oh, we'll, we'll switch to something else. We'll switch to solar, we'll switch to wind, we'll switch to whatever. Um, uh, some unobtainium powered future, right? Here's the, here's the reality. On a global basis, we now, all 7 billion of us, use about 250 million barrels of oil equivalent per day. It's 1.5 exajoules per day. Well, most of the public doesn't understand what a barrel of oil equivalent is or what an exajoule is. So what I've done is translated into Saudi Arabia's. On a, on a daily basis, we consume 30 Saudi Arabia's of primary energy in all forms coal, oil, natural gas, etc. So we run it down and, 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 and break it down in by source. We use 10 Saudi Arabias, which is about, uh, one Saudi Arabia, by the way, is about 8.2 million barrels of oil equivalent per day. We use 10 Saudi Arabias in oil. Every day. Every day. We use nine Saudi Arabias in the form of coal, seven in the form of natural gas. We get uh, two from hydro, one and a half from nuclear, and one half of a Saudi Arabia from all non-hydro renewables. So it, to put another, another way, we use about 50 times as much as everything else as we do, for, as we do the darlings of the moment, solar, wind, natural gas, uh, solar, wind, biofuels, geothermal. Or motorcycles driving by, motorcycles. right. Um, <laughs> I noticed the, uh, I, I learned this from you, I, I broke out the uh, BP uh, World Energy Report last week sure. and noticed that over the last 10 years, the amount of new energy from coal is more than five times as much as new energy from renewables. And nobody knows this. And, 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 it, and, it's, and it, it's, these are simple calculations that could be done by anyone. But Sierra Club, Carl, Carl Pope of the Sierra Club, Greenpeace and Your the rest will we'll, we'll never give you any analysis that breaks it down in terms of scale because they keep lying, let's call it what it is, lying to the public by saying, oh, we can switch to these renewable sources. It cannot be done, not in any, any time frame that makes any sense at all. But yeah, but, but here's the other way to think about it. In the last 10 years, last decade or so, global coal demand has increased by nearly as much as the combined growth in oil, natural gas, hydro, and nuclear combined. Right. That's stunning growth, and it's happening because the demand for electricity all over the world is soaring. Yeah, now, um, that whole point about why I can't meet the demand, just talk a bit about the basics of density and scale. I mean, they're very basic, but people don't know the basics about this, sure. right? Well, there are two types of density to think about. One is energy density, the other is power density. So why do we use gasoline? Why do we use jet fuel, diesel fuel, et cetera? Because they are miraculous substances. If, we didn't, if, if, if oil didn't exist, we would have to invent it. Natural, gasoline has 80 times the energy density of the best, as the best lithium ion batteries. So if you want to have a, a, a certain amount of fuel to drive your car, you're going to need 80 times as much batteries by weight as you do gasoline. Now, the other is power density, which is the key factor in terms of how we produce energy. In, a, in even a marginal natural gas well, the, the power density is roughly 28 watts per square meter. A wind, a, a wind turbine, and I don't care where you put it, one watt per square meter. And I can back that number up six different ways. What does that mean? It means if the U.S. wanted to replace its coal-fired fleet with wind turbines, we have 300 gigawatts, 300 billion watts of coal-fired capacity in the U.S. It means we would need 300 billion square meters, 300,000 square kilometers, 116,000 square miles. That's a land area the size of Italy. It's just not going to happen. So we've beaten down on so, uh, uh, wind power. Uh, you are somewhat more optimistic about solar power, yeah. though. 
Yeah. Tell me a little about that. Well, I'm, I'm optimistic. I have solar panels on the roof of my house in Austin, Texas. Why? Because the city paid two thirds of the cost. Okay, right. I'm I, I, I'm I opposed. Same thing in I, I'm opposed to subsidies unless I'm getting them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, but we're, we're, it's very encouraging to see what's happening in the solar market. The cost per watt of solar panels is declining rapidly uh, from about $20 per watt in 1980 to now less than a dollar a watt. First Solar is projecting less than 50 cents a watt in the next three, four years. So solar has many advantages over wind. Uh, it doesn't require long transmission lines, can be put on houses, on roofs. Um, uh, but it's still, it, relative to global demand, it's an infinitesimal player. So, so Robert, show us your book, one of my favorites. All right, thank you, Steve. Yeah, here it is, Power Hungry, The Myths of Green Energy, The Real Fuels of the Future. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, you don't have to read it, you just have to buy it. <laughs> we'll put it up on the, uh, on the Power Line book list, too. Sure, thanks. Now, you're working on a new project, I think. What is yeah. it? Can, what can you tell us? Um, sure, it's, uh, well, smaller, faster, lighter, denser, cheaper. So, <laughs> it's, it's the trend toward d doing more with less. Right. We're, we're doing that in all kinds of things. Um, and so the, the trend is in computing, the trend is obvious in agriculture, the trend is obvious in, in car engines. We're doing more with less in all kinds of fields and that this is very positive. And it's positive because we're bringing more people out of the dark and into the light. We're bringing people into the age of modernity with electricity and that's very positive. I mean, the, the book I've really written as a, as a rebuke to the catastrophists. We hear over and over, you know, things are getting worse, you know, climate change, uh, lack of fresh water, you know, pollution, da 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 We hear this endlessly. The reality is, when you look objectively at what's happening around the world, things are getting better. And not a little bit better, but a lot better for tens of millions of people. And this is a reason to be optimistic. And it, and to, to, we need to throw off the catastrophists. We need to throw off the, the Neo-Malthusians. I'm an anti-Neo-Malthusian. Anti-Neo-Malthusian. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's almost too many hyphens, but I get it.